So last night, Kamala Harris did a campaign event. It was really for her own staffers. And she led off by praising Joe Biden. This, by the way, is going to be the chief vulnerability for Kamala Harris. We'll discuss all of her vulnerabilities in a moment. She is not a strong candidate. But her chief vulnerability is she's the vice president of a wildly unpopular administration. This administration does not have a list of accomplishments Americans like. It is amazing to watch all these people come out of the woodwork and declare that Joe Biden actually has been an amazing president. Now, a minute ago, they said he was really bad at presidenting. Then he dropped out and suddenly he's an amazing president. Why? Well, they have to flip the narrative. If it turns out he's a crappy president and that Kamala Harris is his crappy vice president, well, then probably she's not a very good candidate. So here is Kamala Harris at the campaign event last night suggesting that Joe Biden has a legacy of accomplishments which is wild since his main accomplishment is just beating Donald Trump. And then his secondary accomplishment, apparently, according to Democrats, is dying in a debate and dropping out of the race. Here's Kamala Harris. Our president, Joe Biden, wanted to be here today. He is feeling much better and recovering fast, and he looks forward to getting back on the road. And I wanted to say a few words about our president. Joe Biden's legacy of accomplishment over the past three years is unmatched in modern history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy, how would you like four years of that? Maybe eight years of that. Would you love that? Would you love eight years of that right there? By the way, his accomplishments are burning the Middle East to a crisp, lighting Ukraine on fire, destroying the economy via inflation, destroying whatever possibility there was of building of social fabric through radical social policy. I mean, truly, name the magical accomplishments of Joe Biden other than elevating Kamala Harris to the nomination via proxy. Because again, she has received zero, count them zero, Democratic primary votes ever in her entire life. And now she's the nominee for the president of the United States. So what is her campaign against Donald Trump going to be? She says that she's going to prosecute Trump. Honestly, like, really, this is all you got in the can? Seriously, this is what you got? So Democrats have been trying this crap since 2015. Since 2015, the idea has been Donald Trump is an out-of-the-box criminal, and we are going to prosecute the case against Donald Trump. Okay, guys, good luck with that. Seriously. Kamala Harris, they are trying to make fetch happen by selecting Kamala Harris, and she is trying to make fetch happen by going after Donald Trump on a prosecutorial basis. This is the kind of stuff that jazzes up a very, very small wing of the Democratic base and literally no one else. Here is Kamala Harris. In the days and weeks ahead, I, together with you, will do everything in my power to unite our Democratic Party, to unite our nation, and to win this election. You know, as many of you know, before I was elected as Vice President, before I was elected as United States Senator, I was the elected Attorney General, as I've mentioned, of California, and before that I was a courtroom prosecutor. In those roles, I took on perpetrators of all kinds. <laughs> Predators who abused women. Fraudsters who ripped off consumers. Cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. No, oh, she's going to prosecute the president of the... <laughs> mm hmm Is she, though? I mean, she was a really bad prosecutor, by the way. If you don't believe me, go watch episode one of our series, Scamala, which is all about Kamala Harris. You can go watch that over at Daily Wire Plus right now when you use that 47% off and become a subscriber. Again, it's everything you need to know about Kamala Harris. We were prepared for Kamala Harris to be the nominee full on two weeks ago, which is why we cut that series. Okay, that, that is not, okay, try it. Seriously, try it. You're going to process, Donald Trump has 100% name recognition. 100%. No one's perception of Donald Trump is going to change from here on out. The question is, can Kamala Harris generate any enthusiasm? And honestly, I haven't seen so much fake enthusiasm for anything in American public life since Beyonce dropped her last album. The, the amount of fake airsats enthusiasm Democrats are trying to gin up, and you can feel it. You can feel it's not real. You can feel they're trying to, they're trying to whip themselves into a lather over Kamala Harris. But there's a phrase that's historically been used about politics, which is that Democrats fall in love, Republicans fall in line. In this election, it's precisely the reverse. Republicans love their candidate. Overall, Republicans love Trump. They have loyalty to Trump. Democrats are falling in line. No one loves Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris has run for president before. She was such a terrible candidate that everyone, including Politico, ran full pieces on how awful her candidacy was. 
Then she was such a terrible vice president that half her staff quit. She is truly bad at this. And we shouldn't remember how bad she is at this. So all this sort of desperate hope that you're seeing in Democratic circles, reality will set in, I believe, soon enough because Kamala Harris is not a good candidate. And she has proved that repeatedly. Remember, Kamala Harris, she's only run effectively one competitive race in the last 20 years. And that was for attorney general of the state of California. She won by one point, by one point. Then she ran a completely non-competitive race in the California Senate for the Senate seat in California against Loretta Sanchez, a fellow Democrat. And then she ran the worst presidential campaign since Rick Perry. Listen, Kamala Harris is a terrible candidate, but then again, she was also a terrible DA. She was a terrible attorney general of the state of California. Things got less safe under Kamala Harris. Speaking of safety, as social unrest escalates and as people begin to fear crime more and more, securing the safeness of your family is more crucial than ever. Now, listen, I'm a big Second Amendment advocate. I own a variety of guns. But if I have the ability to stop a threat inside my own home without killing anybody, I would like to do that. That is what Burna is for. Introducing the Burna Ungun, the non-lethal self-defense platform. Lightweight, simple to use. It uses an easy-to-load five-round magazine and is powered by an eight-gram CO2 cartridge. Burna launchers fire a 68 caliber chemical-filled projectile using a patented pull pierce technology where the CO2 canister is only punctured on the first trigger pull. That means that your launcher is always sitting there at the ready. It's capable of incapacitating an attacker for over 30 minutes. It's accurate and effective at over 60 feet. It doesn't require permits or background checks. It is interstate travel friendly. With Burna, you will be prepared to defend. The Burna is a safer, more sensible alternative that could potentially save lives on both sides, protecting both the user and the aggressor. Visit Burna.com slash Ben. Get 10% off your purchase. That's B-Y-R-N-A.com slash Ben. Check out the latest news about Burna. That's B-Y-R-N-A.com slash Ben. Here's Kamala Harris again, trying to make the pitch. We are not going to go back. We're not. He and his extreme project 2025 will weaken the middle class Come on. and bring us backward. America has tried these economic policies before. They do not lead to prosperity. They lead to inequity and economic injustice. And we are not going back. God, she is so awful. I mean, even her juxtaposition right there of prosperity with economic injustice is truly amazing because, again, the opposite of prosperity is poverty. It's poverty. And right? when she says that we are we are going they lead us away from prosperity and toward economic injustice. Notice what she's doing there. She's doing the equity routine. You know what Americans don't like? The racialized equity routine that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden have been pushing in nonstop since they entered office. Her campaign if she's actually in control of it. Her only hope here is to delegate this thing to the Obama team. That is really her only hope here. She already got rid of, of the Biden team. It's not going to be Tom Donilon. It's not, not going to be General Malley Dillon. It's not going to be the people who got Joe Biden there because they don't like her very much and she doesn't like them. And it better not be her 2019 presidential campaign team because they were truly awful. Her only hope is to basically sit down and be quiet and let Barack Obama's people run this thing. That is her only hope. So far, that doesn't seem to be the case. So for example... According to BBC, Kamala Harris has overhauled her campaign's online presence by embracing a social media trend inspired by pop star Charlie XCX's Brat album cover. The presumptive Democratic presidential nominee has scattered references to the album across her campaign's account, renaming her profile Kamala HQ. Her rebrand comes as Charlie showed her support by treating Kamala is Brat shortly after President Joe Biden announced he was stepping out of the race. By Monday morning, Harris had seized on Charlie XCX's backing with the account supporting a new lime green photo in the style of the Brat album cover. So for those of you who have no idea what exactly Brat means because, you know, you're over the age of 15, here's what Brat means, according to Charlie XCX. You're just like that girl who's a little messy and likes to party and maybe says some dumb things sometimes, who feels like herself, but maybe also has a breakdown, but kind of like parties, though it is it is very honest, very blunt, a little bit volatile, like does dumb things, but it's Brad. You're Brad. That's Brad. Okay, that is the campaign that I desperately hope Kamala Harris continues to run. Kamala Harris as Brat. Says dumb things, does dumb things, get drunk sometimes, but has fun. Also, can I just explain? No one above the age of 25 in the United States knows what the F brat means. When we think brat, we think like spoil brat, like some of our children. <laughs> no one thinks brat is something good. But Kamala Harris is so terminally online, so disconnected from the general public that she believes that Charlie XCX, who, again, most people above the age of 35 have never heard of Charlie XCX. She thinks that embracing the branding of Charlie XCX is somehow good for her. That's how disconnected and terrible her campaign is. Now, for his part, Donald Trump 
slammed Harris as dumb as a rock on his Truth Social page. Now, again, I think he's going to have to do better than this in terms of the nickname. This is this is pretty. Eh. Here's what he posted. He said, wow, just watching the fake news, they're doing their very best to turn the worst president in the history of our country into a brilliant and heroic leader. He was heroic because he quit and turned dumb as a rock, Kamala Harris, from a totally failed and insignificant vice president into a future great president. No, it just doesn't work that way. He's been trying out a few different lines on Kamala Harris. So he has called her laughing at Kamala, which, meh. Uh, Again, I recommend Scamala. I think that it is the best term for her. Also, I think comma liar would probably be good because she is deeply, deeply dishonest. You know, just a few suggestions for the president if he is taking suggestions. He did call her this morning lion Kamala, which again, he used the lion's head, but then he also called Joe Biden crooked Joe. So lion, lion Kamala is pretty good. Again, I think that's probably, and it seems like he's settling on that because he's used that multiple times this morning. He said, Lion Kamala Harris, the Biden appointed border czar who never visited the border and whose incompetence gave us the worst and most dangerous border anywhere in the world has absolutely terrible poll numbers against a fine and brilliant young man named Donald J. Trump. <laughs> Love that Trump calls himself a fine and brilliant young man. He's 78. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for, Democrats, MAGA, 2024. So yeah, pretty, pretty solid stuff there from President Trump. Are you tired of the lies and the twist of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. 